Hi, I'm Kate Richberg, and welcome to Beejucation.com. Today, you're going to learn the fundamentals of stringing techniques. Now, this class is really a fundamental in your jewelry arsenal. This is one of the first steps you're going to take in order to make some terrific beaded jewelry. I would also recommend um, this class for the student that maybe has had a little more experience with stringing, but maybe your pieces just aren't staying together like you'd like them to. Perhaps you make a necklace or a bracelet and it falls right off your wrist and neck and you think, well, I've used those tools correctly. How come things aren't staying together? Or perhaps you're even a more seasoned jewelry designer and your pieces are staying together beautifully, but you're a little tired of kind of the simple um, closure that you're putting on and you'd like to maybe jazz that piece up a little bit. So let's gather your things from your bead box, have a seat, and let's get started. So for stringing fundamentals, let's talk a little bit about the tools and materials you're going to need. They're very simple um, tools and materials. You may already have some of these things at home, but let's go through them now. I have three basic pliers that you're going to be using a regular chain nose plier, a nice wire cutter, and the crimping tool. Now, the crimping tool, I think, is the most important plier that you're going to have in front of you today. And I'll explain a little more about exactly how this crimper works, but this is uh, going to give you successful, really tightly crimped crimp tubes. So I think this is really an essential. You're also going to need a bead design board, which I have in front of me right here. Um, or you can substitute another beading surface, like uh, if you have a velvet pad or a little piece of felt, even a dish towel will work. But I love the bead design boards since they have um, some nice measurements and things on them. And I'll show you how to utilize that as well in a few minutes. And of course, we need a ruler. It doesn't have to be this fancy foldy ruler. It can be any ruler of your choice. And lastly, this essential tool, you're going to need some regular um, cellophane tape. Let me go over the materials that we're going to be using for today's project. Here are the freshwater pearls, the Austrian crystal bicone beads, some sterling silver star spacers over here, and here are the findings that we're going to be using to keep our bracelet closed, to close off the bracelet. We have a lobster claw clasp with a soldered ring that's going to go on the very end. And we've got some findings here. This is a wire guard, the little horseshoe shaped finding up top. This is a crimp cover. It looks like a little bead with an opening in the side. And of course, our two by two crimp tube. Let me turn that over so you can see it that two by two crimp tube here, and that's what's actually going to close your beading wire and hold it together. Of course, you're also going to need a stringing material. Today we're going to be using soft flex beading wire. It's a nylon coated wire beading cable. There are many different wire cables out on the market, but we're going to use soft flex for today's project. Today we're going to stick with the diameter that's known as fine. The diameter is a .014, so it's thin enough that it'll fit through those freshwater pearls and those crystals, but heavy enough to take the wear and tear um, of everyday use. Let's get started laying out our project today. A lot of times, I think, when students who are just beginning to make beaded jewelry um, start to lay out a project or a design, you know, a beaded necklace or bracelet, I think sometimes they get a little stumped at what beads they should use. There's so many beads out there that you can choose from, you know, wood, glass, semi-precious, pearl. Sometimes it's hard to figure out where to get started. So I have this bead design board in front of me, and I think that's a really good way to kind of help you have a little, you know, a little path, a little design area to work on. And I think it helps you to begin to start to, you know, finalize your ideas or think about what you want to do. I tell my students, as I'm telling you, to start, find one bead that you like. 
Um, maybe you have a pendant that you've always wanted to use, or you have a little bag of beads in your drawer that maybe you bought years ago and you're thinking, oh, I would love to string those up into a necklace or bracelet. Or maybe it's a different starting point. Maybe you're making a gift for someone and, you know, so think about their tastes. You know, what type of jewelry do they wear um, or the type of colors or clothing that they like. Or think about a color. Maybe you have a piece that, um, you know, or, or an outfit that you're thinking, oh, I'd love to have a necklace that's blue. So, you know, use that color as your starting point. But you can, if you can identify where you want to begin with your design, I think the rest of it will help to make, uh, you know, a lot more sense. And also, I want you to remember, beads are the ultimate in reusable craft items. If you string up your necklace or bracelet, you can simply cut it apart. You know, you can take the wire cutters, snip that soft flex, and start all over again. Nothing is ever set in stone when you, when you string. So you don't need to worry about, you know, making this necklace that's gonna last forever. You know, we want it to be sturdy and last forever, but the design doesn't have to be a design masterpiece right out of the gate. Okay, so with that being said, let me show you this bead design board. This is a smaller design board. There are a lot of different design boards that are out on the market, but I really like this one because it's not so huge that you have to clear a big space off your work table, you know, to use it. You can sit it on your lap if you're sitting on the couch in front of the TV, or it can just sit simply on your coffee table or on your kitchen table or wherever it is that you work. So this design board here has some spaces where you can store your beads as you're stringing, as well as it has three channels that you're able to lay your beads out in. And it also has all of these numbers on it. And you think, you know, what, what are all these numbers for? Well, the numbers are for measuring. So if we look at the design board and we look at the very middle here, we see the number zero. Zero means that's the center of the strand. And as you go up on both sides, you see the numbers go out as one, two, and three, four, and so on on both sides. So let's say that we're making a bracelet which we are today in this class. Um, if I string my beads up to a little past the three on both sides, I'm gonna get about a six and a half inch worth of beads strung up. And that's about what I want for a bracelet because we also have to add in the length of the clasp and the closures and things like that. I'll talk a little bit more about measuring in a little bit, but just to give you a good general idea. The true measurement of the bead design board is this outer channel, and things graduate up as you go up in the channels on the design board. So if you're just making a single strand necklace or bracelet, you wanna use the channel that's right here on the outside. All right, so let's start laying these beads down on the design board. Now, as you've chosen your beads, maybe you do have an idea of whether you want it to be a necklace or a bracelet, but at this point, I don't want you to worry too much about the length. What we're really gonna focus on first is the design. So I've chosen some freshwater pearls today, and I'm gonna place those in the center of my design board. Now, if you'll notice, these pearls are a little oddly shaped, so they don't really sit too well here in the channel of the board. That's okay. We're just gonna get the design um, you know, laid out, and then we'll be able to come back in and add or take away beads when we actually string them on the thread. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to say five of these pearls here in the middle. Now let's say you've chosen your beads and you're looking at them and you really like them, but you're stumped as to where to go next. Well, think about um, what the bead that you've chosen, what it really looks like. These pearls have a little bit of shine to them. They're kind of an odd shape but they're opaque rather than transparent. So I'm thinking in my head, well, maybe I need to alter the shape of my next bead. If these are the beads that are gonna be in the center, maybe those accent beads around it need to be a little bit smaller, and maybe I wanna use something that's transparent. So, Austrian crystal to the rescue, I'm gonna put some crystal beads here next to it, and I'm gonna put three of those beads 
down. Now, these little guys, I think add some nice texture to what we've got going on, as well as the transparency and, you know, being that they're crystal, they add some nice sparkle and some sheen, I think, to the piece. Now, I could have chosen these crystals to be a different color, but I am sticking with a monochromatic palette today. But these pearls, these grayish silvery pearls, really lend themselves to adding any color to them. You know, the pearls have a little bit of green in them, they have a little bit of purple in them, so it just depends. If you want to accent them with a strong, bold color, go for it. Um, but I'm going to stick with this monochromatic palette today. So I'm going to lay in, if I'm using a series of five pearls, I'm going to lay in those five pearls on the side and on the other side here and lay in those three crystals. So I'm going to alternate three crystals and five pearls. I'm going to lay those down here. And again, I'm not paying that much attention to how they lay on the design board, you know, if all the little um, holes in the beads are lined up one against the other. What I'm worried about is the pattern, because sometimes when I do a piece with a pattern, I really like to make sure that I lay it out, because inevitably I'm going to forget one of those beads, and when I'm done, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to see that this pattern is a little off from this pattern. So I think the design board, again, really helps, you know, kind of lay everything out to make sure that everything's right when you put it on your soft flex. So here uh, I have this center section. I have the crystals, more pearls, crystals, more pearls, and I want to end with some crystals here. Now I really have no idea about how long this piece is going to be because as you can see I've laid them out to be you know, really not lined up, just um, laying out for pattern. So I always tell my students not to fuss too much with getting these pearls completely lined up. You're going to see really what it looks like when you get it on the thread. So the sooner you get it on the thread, I think the faster your design process goes. Um, I also have some of these little star spacers here and I'm just going to lay them where I think they might go and it's kind of hard. Spacers get lost a little bit, I think, on your design board. So I have the tendency to lay them on the board itself rather than in the little trough here, just where I think they might go. And when I think I'm ready to add them in, I'll just string along, then pop up here, grab one of my spacers, string along, pop up and grab one of the spacers. So I don't lose any in the shuffle of when I'm stringing. So I've got some of those laid out here. I'm going to take a look and see if I want to add anything else, if I feel like I need, you know, another bead or a different spacer. But I think this looks like it's pretty good to go. So I'm going to cut some thread and we're going to start stringing. Okay, let's get to stringing. First, we need to cut our stringing material so it's the correct length. So our bracelet finished is going to be somewhere between seven and seven and a half inches, maybe a little more if you have a wrist that's a little bit bigger. But I think a good rule of thumb for measuring for a bracelet is I cut about 10 inches of the stringing material. That way I have enough on both sides that if I make a mistake and have to cut the clasp off and reattach it, I still have some room to do that where I wouldn't have to restring the whole piece and I have enough of the string material to work with on both sides so I'm not using a little teeny piece of string material when I'm trying to close it up. For a necklace I would say you want to add about two inches more per side um, so if your necklace is a 16 inch necklace you'd probably want to cut about 20 inches worth of stringing material. So to cut my beading wire I'm going to use just a regular wire cutter do take note that the beading wire is a steel wire that's coated with a nylon surface, a very flexible nylon surface, but that steel beading wire can dull the tips of your 
um, wire cutters over time. So if you do have an extra pair of wire cutters in your toolkit, you might want to res reserve those um, exclusively for your soft flex use or your beading wire use. So, you know, maybe you don't want to use your most expensive cutters, but you do need a nice heavy duty pair of cutters to cut through that wire. So let me measure this out at 10 inches worth of beading wire here. Give it a little measure and a little clip right here at the end. Now this beading wire, if you buy it by the spool, you want to make sure and keep it together by using this little plastic collar that goes on it. Um, this kind of keeps everything um, all together uh, so it doesn't end up a big rat's nest um, in your bead box. So make sure and put that, put that collar back on it. Now I've got some tape here. And tape is very important when you're stringing, and I'm going to show you why. If you don't have a stopper here on the end of your soft flex and you string your beads on, your beads are just going to fall right off. But I also don't want to crimp my clasp on the end of, the, on the end of this because I want the freedom to adjust the design on both sides of this, uh, of this beading wire. So I'm going to start by putting this piece of tape on maybe, I don't know, about an inch or so down, and I'm going to fold it over the stringing material so it looks like a little flag, just like this. Make sure, though, that the tape, when you put the tape on, that it's on there nice and tight. Um, if you're a little cavalier about putting your tape on and you put your first beads on, it might, not, uh, it might knock the tape right off and your beads are going to fall off with it. So just give it a little press here with your fingers to make sure that everything's tight. I'm going to begin by just putting the beads on my stringing material and I'm going to start from this side of the bead board here and just slide them on and see how they look. So like I mentioned, I ended here with a Swarovski crystal, um, an Austrian crystal bead, and I like doing that because if you need to adjust the length of your um, necklace or bracelet, those little crystals give you a lot of leeway with the length. You can add a couple or take a few away at the end and it won't really be noticed. You know, when you're measuring for a necklace or a bracelet, a bracelet I think is a much more important measurement or a measurement that you have to really be much more precise with. Um, if a bracelet is too large, the bracelet's just going to fall right off your wrist. But with a necklace, you know, if it's a few, maybe an inch or so longer than it needs to be, it's not the end of the world. But we're going to really talk about um, measuring and how to get those measurements exactly right. I'm adding my pearls on and I'm continuing to go ahead and add my crystals. Now I'm not even looking at how this is coming out yet. Uh, I want to get a few beads on the stringing material before I actually check the pattern and see if it works out. So I've got a spacer there. I need to make sure I'm stringing the pattern correctly. I might be a little distracted. Let's see, get this on there. So as I examine the pattern um, that I have made on my bracelet, I like the way that the pearls and the crystals, they're a nice, I think, contrast in shape and in size. I think the color works out pretty nicely, um, but I think I might actually want to add a little more silver to this piece. Um, and I also may want to take a look at this crystal section. I might actually want to make that crystal section a little shorter so there's not so much room in between the pearls. So I'm going to take this off back onto my design board and I'm going to take it off up to where my crystals are and I'm going to put those pearls back on and then I'm going to check the design. 
I think this active design work that you're doing while you string, um, I think it works out pretty well. I think, you know, even though you're putting beads on and taking beads off, I think it helps to refine your design a lot quicker um, because things on the design board look a lot different than they do once they're strung up on your beading wire. So sometimes I feel like I've just got to get them on there and take a look and really see what they look like, you know, before I reserve my final judgment for that. So I've put these pieces back on and I'm going to hold this up so you can see. I have the same five units of pearls, but I've shortened the crystals in between them, so there's just two sitting in between. And I actually like that a little bit better. I think three crystals might have been a bit long, um, but let's say that perhaps this was a necklace design. I might want to pull those pearls out to be a little further away and fill those in with smaller beads so that these pearls would stand out on the necklace. But for a bracelet, you're working in a space that's a little more compact, so we want to pull everything in a little bit so we can kind of maximize that design. So I'm going to continue stringing this up and then we'll look at how we measure. Now our piece is all strung up. Let's take a look at the measurement and the layout of the finished piece before we move on to putting on the clasp. You can see here this middle segment uh, is at zero, this middle segment of pearls. And I have one, two, three, and one, two, three for a total of seven segments of the pearls. And you can see I have two of the crystals laying in between each one. Now over here with the tape, if you remember when I began stringing, I put on three crystals rather than two. And I talked about using the tape to um, act as a stopper. So if I needed to alter the design, I wouldn't have had the clasp crimped on there already. And indeed, I am going to need to alter that three and knock those back down to two crystals here. Because if you take a look at the measurement of this bracelet, it goes to the three and a half, a little over if we're looking at that third crystal. But three and a half on each side is going to give us seven inches worth of beads, which is perfect because the closure is going to add about another half an inch or so. So, what I do next is I'm going to get another piece of tape and put it on the other side of my beading wire. Remember, we want to close that up really tightly. We're going to slide all of the beads over, and we're just going to gently remove the tape on the other side. Now, the Softflex comes in and kind of rips the little folded end of the tape here. We just want to be really gentle when we take off this tape because if we kind of pull it off and we curve this soft flex or kink it in any way, that kink is gonna be permanent. It's very difficult to get a kink out of soft flex. Well, it's not difficult, it's impossible to get a kink out of soft flex. So you wanna make sure to keep this as straight and true as possible. So I'm gonna take one of those crystals off and just for good measure, because the bead's natural habitat is the floor. The beads want to go on the floor uh, so badly that uh, they're going to jump right off of that thread. So you want to make sure to lock them on there by using tape on both sides. I'm just going to double check that length now that I've taped off both of these sides. Double check that length on my bead design board. Or you can also bring in your ruler and double check that length right here as well. And this gives me, the ruler shows me that yeah, it's really close to about that seven inch mark. Now, we wanna also take a look at the difference between having this, uh, this bracelet in the curve and having it laid straight out 
like this as well. As I said, we're almost to seven, so this real true measurement is right up against the ruler here. Um, I would use this bead design board kind of as a guideline, but just double check it here um, on your straight ruler as well. Once you've made one or two bracelets, the sizing is going to be a lot easier for you to deal with. You may also want to get a tape measure and measure your wrist um, to see, you know, how long you want your bracelet to be. The thing you want to keep in mind when you're measuring that bracelet, these beads are fairly small, so they don't take up that much room as they go around your wrist. But let's say I were using beads that were quite a bit larger. Those beads are going to take up a little bit more room. So if my beads, say, were a larger 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, or for a really bold statement, maybe a 12 millimeter, you're going to need to actually make that bracelet a little bit longer. And simply put the tape on both sides and actually wrap it around your wrist and see how you like things fitting. Now, looking at this on my wrist here, I'm I like my bracelets to be a little more loose. So even though I've measured it here on the design board and here with my ruler, when it's in actual use here, I can see that I'm leaving a pretty big gap where my clasp is going to be. Because remember, we always have to add length for the clasp. And I might have to add that third crystal on here after all. So I'm gonna do that and we'll recheck the length. String it. Put on your tape, nice and tight. Add your bead. And tape on the other side. Now let's take a look at how this fits. I'm going to wrap it around my wrist again. Maybe you have a bead buddy that can help you measure this as well. But with the tape on here, it's pretty simple to just wrap it around your wrist and see how that's going to fit. I think this actually looks a lot better because I can see the gap in here is about a half an inch or so. So I'm going to put this piece down and pick up my clasp and just lay my clasp out along my ruler just to double check that I have about the right length. And that's about a half an inch. With the crimp tubes and the closures that I have, I think it's gonna come in just at the right size. Like I stated before, the crimping plier is really the most important tool you're going to use when you're stringing. So I want to guide you through how it works before we actually close our bracelet off. You can see the jaws of the handle have three little segments in them. This first segment, which is the rounder, and the next two segments are the actual crimpers. We're going to use this middle segment here because the crimp tube that we're using is a 2x2 two two crimp tube, which means it's 2 millimeters in length by 2 millimeters in diameter. And this crimping plier, this middle segment, is really made to fit that 2x2 two two crimp tube just perfectly. If you have a larger crimp tube, like a 3x3, three three, that's what you'd use the outside little crimping segment here for. So let me draw you what that crimping, the head of that crimp tool looks like, just so you can get a really close-up view. The head of the tool looks like this. That's the head of the plier going off that way. And then the bottom jaw looks like this. Okay, so we can see that's the jaw of the plier here. Now, this first segment we're actually not going to be using because remember that's for the three millimeter or the larger crimp tube. We're actually going to be using this one. That's our first channel that we're going to be crimping with. And the rounder, 
which is our second channel that we're going to be crimping with. I'm right-handed, so I hold the crimping plier in my right hand. First of all, we're going to make a little practice run with our crimp tubes and our crimping plier so you can see how this is going to go together. I'm going to start by putting my 2x2 two two crimp tube just on a little practice length of my beading wire. Next, I'm going to add my wire guard onto that beading wire. And the wire guard is shaped like a little horseshoe and the stringing material goes down at the bottom of the leg of the horseshoe, comes up and around, so it curves. There's a little trough at the top of that wire guard that your stringing material is going to sit right into. That gets pulled tight, and then the clasp goes on. Now you can see I have actually connected the two parts of our clasp together and that's really important. You're going to see why that's so important in a minute, but just go with me here. We're going to have those two pieces connected together. I slide my piece of soft flex in so it sits nicely in that wire guard. The nice thing about this wire guard is not only does it give extra strength to this loop, but it also makes sure that the loop you crimp on the end of your necklace or bracelet is large enough so that your clasp can move around nice and freely. You don't want to crimp a loop that's too small. Your clasp will be too tight on the end and it won't move all that well. I'm going to slide my crimp tube right up to the end of the wire guard. Now if you're doing this and you don't have wire guards, um, just make sure, as I said, to have the loop be nice and large, not so large that it looks really big at the end of your piece, but large enough so that there's movement there. Now let's refer back to the drawing. We're going to use this first segment here, which is actually the middle um, little divot here on the head of your crimping plier. I'm going to come in Now it's a little hard to see because all of these findings are so shiny, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my 2x2 two two crimp tube, you can see it's sitting just below the wire guard there, I'm going to lay that in the bottom little trough of that center section of your crimping plier. The little point that's on the top jaw of the crimping plier sits just on top of that crimp tube. And again, I know it's a little hard to see, but you can see that crimp tube is placed right in the jaw there. Now I'm going to spread my two strands of stringing material apart so that when I gently crimp this crimp tube, one of the little strands is coming out of one side of the tube and the other strand is coming out from the other side. Let me show you that up close. Can you see how the crimping plier has made a little line? It's crimped this crimping tube so it's really divided into two little channels and the strands of your beading wire are coming out that end. Just to show you on this drawing, we placed our crimp tube right down here into our crimping plier and this little point of the top jaw came right down so that, let's make this the side view of your crimp tube, it has been crimped so there's a little divot right there in the middle. Now, for part two of the crimping process, we're going to move the crimp tube over to the channel at the end of the jaws of the tool. Right here, that end channel. We're going to turn our crimp tube where it was laying on its back, we're going to turn it to the side. I'm going to draw it here for you as best as I can. So there's the crimped tube and we're going to lay that crimped crimp tube 
right in the head of the tip of the crimping plier. So it went from laying flat to standing up. And the motion that we're going to be doing with the crimping plier is we're going to gently ease it closed and that's going to bring the edges of the crimp tube together so it's folded up nice and tightly. Let me draw that for you one more time. So once it's folded, those ends are going to fold right in onto themselves so it almost looks like a little closed clamshell. Let me do it for you on our sample. You can see at the head of the tool the nice little rounded segment and I'm going to lay that crimp tube in that little opening. I really want to make sure that my crimp tube is laying straight up and down in this plier because this is the really important part of crimping. We want to make sure that that crimp tube is crimped all the way across and when we fold it, we want to give it as even a fold as we can so we can get it nice and tight. Because remember, this crimp tube is really the only thing that's holding your necklace or bracelet together. Now I'm going to gently squeeze the head of the crimping plier closed. And I also wanted to mention, if I turn the crimping plier this way, you can see that crimp tube is fitting in there just perfectly. There's no tube laying on this side or this side of the plier. It's completely covered. You want to make sure that's happening. Once I've crimped this really tightly, I'm going to put my crimping plier down and I'm going to bring in my flat needle nose plier. And I'm just going to give it an extra little squeeze to make sure that everything's tight. Now you can see that little fold in the crimp tube right there in the middle and the folded crimp tube all the way around. Again, we want to make sure that's nice and tight because this is the only thing that's holding your piece together. Now I'm going to come in with my wire cutters and clip that wire as close to the crimp tube as I can so I don't have any little burr hanging out here. Some people like to leave that little tail on the end and string your beads over the top of that tail, but honestly if you have that tail of Softflex here at the end and your crimp tube isn't crimped tightly, that little tail is just going to come right out and your clasp is going to fall off anyway. It doesn't add any strength to the piece. What really adds to the strength of this is to make sure that your crimp tube is completely and thoroughly crimped. So I go ahead and cut that little tail away because I don't want it scratching my wrist or my neck in the finished piece. I wanted to also mention the quality of the crimp beads that we're using today. These are crimp tubes. As I mentioned earlier, it's two millimeters long by two millimeters in diameter and the walls of these crimp tubes are very thick. The process that we're doing today really won't work on base metal crimp tubes where the walls are a little bit thinner or the crimp beads that are actually a rounded bead rather than a tube. You're not able to get a really tight crimp on those and they're just going to fall right off of your piece or break. So I would invest in the money in making sure that you get nice gold filled or sterling silver crimp tubes that are nice and sturdy. Now we're going to put on the crimp cover. This crimp cover is like a little bead that has an opening in it. And that little crimp cover is going to come right around and hide that crimp tube from view. So I'm going to use, again, our friend, the crimping tool. And I'm going to put the crimp cover right here in the head of the tool, in the part that we used to round up the crimp bead. I'm going to place my crimp bead so it sits right in the center of the crimp cover. And I'm going to give that crimp cover a little squeeze 
a very gentle squeeze with the plier. Now, what we want to do is maintain the integrity or the roundness of that crimp cover, but you can see one crimp didn't quite do it. There's still a gap here in the cover. So to close that gap, I lay it again in the head of the crimping plier and give it just a little close right at the top of that gap. And that actually, that motion rounds the bead up and closes the opening. So what we have here is our crimp cover covering our two by two crimp, our wire guard, and our clasp. It's pretty easy to do it on this practice piece of stringing material, and I urge you to give it a go several times before you actually apply this to your finished um, bracelet or necklace. Now let's take these skills to our bracelet and close that up. Okay, take a deep breath and let's actually crimp our bracelet closed. You can see I have the lobster claw clasp here. The clasp is already connected to a soldered ring. You want to make sure to use a soldered ring here rather than a jump ring. A jump ring is a ring that actually has an opening in it and it's very difficult to get that jump ring completely closed so that your beading wire doesn't um, pull through. So if you use a soldered ring, you're not going to have any trouble with your stringing material pulling through that ring and coming loose. We also have our little pile of findings over here, our wire guards, crimp covers, and crimp tubes. So let's get started. You can see here's my bracelet all strung up with the tape on the ends. We've measured it we know that it's fitting, or at least we're hoping that it's fitting, and we're going to add the clasp. So, first, we're going to take this tape off the end very gently, because remember, we don't want to kink our soft flex, or else it'll have a permanent bend in it that we can't get out. We're going to put on our crimp tube, put on our wire guard, just like we did before, slide the soft flex on around the wire guard, back down through, and before the end of your soft flex goes back through that crimp tube, make sure and add your clasp. Sometimes I think you get so excited, or at least I do, that I'm almost done, that I just go ahead and make a loop, put it back through my crimp tube, and crimp it closed and I forget to put my clasp on. So don't forget that part, that the loop has to go around the end of the clasp. Now I'm just going to slide my crimp tube up and give it a crimp. I'm not worrying about making the beads super tight next to this crimp tube. That's going to happen when I crimp the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp it nice and firmly I'm checking to see that I've crimped all the way across my crimp tube. Now I'm going to come up from behind and fold that crimp tube in half. For an extra added bit of protection, I'll come in, give it just a gentle squeeze with my chain nose plier. I'm going to go ahead with my wire cutter and clip that beading wire really close to the crimp tube there. Let's cover that crimp with this crimp cover. Now if you don't have crimp covers, it's not the end of the world. You can just leave it leave your necklace just like this with the crimp exposed, especially if you have a nice finished, um, nicely folded crimp. Um, it's not going to look too bad at all. But I like the little extra bonus 
of having this crimp cover on. I think it just makes for a nicer finished look. So I've put my crimp cover up and over my crimp tube, given it a little squeeze, turned my plier, and given that crimp cover a little squeeze right on the seam to close it up. Okay, that was the easy side. Now we're going to do the side that's a little more difficult because we need to take up the slack in the soft flex so that your beads aren't loose on the stringing material. We also, though, don't want to make the beads too tight on the stringing material. So this is why I have my clasp connected together. Whatever type of clasp you choose to use, just make sure that both sides are connected and this will really um, size your bracelet exactly right. You can see this bracelet is in a curve and that's just how you wear it on your wrist. And you want to have this curved bracelet have enough slack in it so that has, it has a nice natural movement to it. Remember that this is wire underneath. So let's say that you had your bracelet out nice and, you know, nice and laid out on your surface here, your work surface, and you go ahead and crimp it. And you make sure, because you know you want your pieces to be nice and sturdy, that you're crimping it nice and tight. And then when you try and bring your bracelet around, your bracelet seems really stiff and springy. It's because you've crimped when it's flat like this and you've just crimped it too tightly and things don't move around as they should. So let's make sure that it's nice and in the round with the clasp connected and you're going to see how nicely this will crimp together. So let's remove that second piece of tape. We'll repeat just as we did before with our crimp tube, your wire guard if you have it. If not, just loop your soft flex right around your clasp. Tighten that up. This time it's going to go through the soldered ring of your clasp and back through that crimp tube. Now, how do we get rid of this extra wire? I'm going to show you. I simply put my index finger on the clasp to hold it in place and I make sure that all of the slack in the piece or all of the exposed wire is right down here. If it's not, go ahead and push everything down and bring that wire all the way over here to this side. I put my index finger on the clasp and I use my chain nose plier to grab the end of the stringing material and I simply pull gently to take up that slack. I double check and make sure that my bracelet still is nice and loose to the touch but visually I don't see any soft flex exposed. Now I'm going to go ahead and crimp. Grab my crimping plier. My crimp tube goes in that little center and I crimp it down firmly. Turn the crimping plier to the side and gently fold it in half. Follow up with a little hug from our chain nose plier and go ahead and clip the extra away. Lastly, I want to get my crimp cover up and around my crimp tube, close it very gently, and just press very slightly on that open seam to close it up. And as you can see, here is our beautifully finished bracelet.
And as you can see, the possibilities are really endless. Go ahead, take a look in your craft drawer or in your bead room, pick out some beautiful beads and just start stringing. You can start with a centerpiece, a color, or maybe make a gift for you or for someone else. Stringing is simple, enjoyable, and you'll really be able to create some unique pieces for your jewelry collection. Mm -hmm.